Welcome back to ThinkTech. I'm Jay Fidel, and uh, this is Global Connections, and we're going to cover something we covered a few years ago. That is the um, Hong Kong Business Association, um, which is uh, operated by uh, Karina Poon, and we have Karina right here with us to tell us about it, and it's going to be a, a program. The association is going to have uh, its flagship conference on Oahu, and it's going to be at the Hawaii Convention Center. That's big time on September 26th. And uh, one of the one of the uh, principals of that organization is Terry Sumita of the Carl Smith Ball Firm. And he's going to help Arena remember everything she needs to say. Uh, so as a matter <laughs> as a matter of fact, Jerry's going to go first because he has to leave in the middle. So what is this conference all about, Jerry? What are you covering? Who's coming? Why? Well, those those questions. Well, first off, Jay, it's great to see you again, especially in this post-pandemic, COVID pandemic era that we're now getting out of. But the conference itself, and Verena is the one who's really the uh, authority on that and can give you all of the details. The conference itself is a resumption of what used to be an annual conference held by the Hong Kong Business Association of Hawaii to focus on the relationship between the state of Hawaii primarily, and the U.S. in the background, and Hong Kong in particular. I think we all, or most of us, know that the relationship between Hawaii and Hong Kong has been a very, very long-standing one. You can take it back to the period of the time when immigration uh, was a motive force for bringing people to Hawaii. But in more recent times, of course, the vibrancy of Hong Kong, especially in the pre-handover days as the gateway to China provided an opportunity for many uh, in Hawaii as well as elsewhere who had an interest in China to locate first in Hong Kong and then pave the way to go into mainland China. COVID interrupted all of that, as we know, as it did many, many things. So what this conference is, is an effort to resurrect uh, the program that we had once and resume the kind of dialogue and activities and discussions of opportunities that uh, occurred previous to COVID. So that's the immediate genesis of this conference, which as I said, Barina can explain in much more detail than I can. Okay, but uh, fair is fair. We should talk about the changes that have taken place uh, since the last conference, because uh, uh, this, this makes it kind of an uphill experience. Uh, Hong Kong is now completely PRC. Um, I wonder if uh, the PRC supports uh, the Hong Kong Business Association of Hawaii, um, and it's of some concern. Uh, the umbrella movement uh, resulted in the national security law, which is brutal, and a lot of um, important people, important journalists, have been spirited away to the, the mainland, and uh, they're in jail or they're having punitive retraining. A lot of people are leaving to get away from Hong Kong, including business people. And China is being much more aggressive, you know, about Taiwan and about the Taiwan Strait. Only uh, yesterday, 103 sorties over the Taiwan Strait. It's an unprecedented uh, number, and it's an unprecedented provocation. Uh, the tension is growing every day with Taiwan and with the U.S. and with other countries in the, in the in the region. So while there was a representative government a few years ago, now it has become, in the words of American diplomats, a dictatorship beyond autocracy. How can we feel comfortable, you know, in dealing with Hong Kong when we know that Hong Kong is, is really being run, um, you know, um, by China? Um, they're offering, you know, uh, vouchers for meals. And, you know, that tells you that they're really having trouble getting people to come over there. So, um, so you know, China is, is really going kind of rogue these days. Um, and it was an article in the Times, I think, yesterday about how it's doing more espionage on the United States, um, set up a Chinese police station in Brooklyn. And we know about the balloons a few months ago. So when you did your program last time, and I think I was there, yeah. Um, the, you know, the question is, uh, you know, should you invest uh, in China in, in the Belt Road Initiative? 
And um, but query, are they still doing that? Because India is competing with them. Um, Russia is competing with them. Italy dropped out last week, and, and Italy is a problem because that's the only way to get to Spain, and, and Belt Road was supposed to go to Spain. So um, that's kind of on the shelf. So if you're talking about an investment, you're probably talking about other kinds of investment. So my question to you both, but you first, Jerry, because you're going to leave in a little while, is how does the conference address all of this? It is of great concern to any investor or anyone who follows global events in Asia, Indo, Indo-Pacific. Well, Jay, that's an absolutely fundamental question and one, quite frankly, which is very disturbing to all of us. Um, for those of us, and I, I would count yourself among them, who have spent a lot of time in Hong Kong, way starting from way before handover took place, let alone after handover, the Hong Kong of today appears basically not to be the Hong Kong of the past in many ways, and those ways are not necessarily advantageous, to put it relatively mildly. That's a tough question. And there are at least two dimensions to looking at Hong Kong today. And by the way, I think a lot of us still have a lot of friends, both in government, as well as in that is the Hong Kong government, as well as in the business and other community sectors in Hong Kong that uh, we're in communication with and care very deeply about in the future of Hong Kong. But the question is there, and it's a tough one. Um, without question, what was to be the basic law and the philosophy underlining has been very significantly undermined in many different areas by China. And what the future is going to be with respect to Hong Kong, we don't know. And it's, it's very difficult to guess, but it's not necessarily going to be a good one, at least in the short term. Nonetheless, having said that, although much of the media and much of the commentary, as well as the political um, perspectives of the Congress and the administration about Hong Kong are very negative and focused on the national security law and the geopolitical dimensions between China and the US. Nonetheless, to a certain extent, Hong Kong is still not and integrated part of China in the sense of, say, Beijing or Shanghai, or Guangzhou or other cities in China. It is still, as an economy, I think an independent, by and large, rule of law jurisdiction, putting aside the national security aspects, which are very difficult to put aside. And there still are opportunities uh, for China as a regional economic uh, and commercial center that could provide and continue to provide opportunities for people from Hawaii and the U.S. mainland and Hong Kong. To say that it's going to be like it was in the olden days is completely um, unrealistic. To say that one is dealing with a total dictatorship situation in Hong Kong, I think at this point, other than perhaps in the national security and political and civil rights aspect may go a little bit too far. So we're not asking for compromises or for looking at the other way, quite the contrary. I think one's got to be very realistic. And if you're going to do business in Hong Kong, go in with your eyes wide open, your due diligence well done, and your partners uh, well chosen. But the point is that it is still a vibrant economic base within Asia. And it is still a gateway into China to a certain respect for those who have that kind of interest. It's not necessarily an investment in the, same, in the sense of foreign direct investment money going into China or into Hong Kong, but as a way to conduct business services, buy products from import products into, it still can be a, a very strong base. And there is one other aspect to this, which I think is coming to be realized more and more with all of this talk about decoupling and, and de-risking. Uh, it is very, very difficult at this point and for the foreseeable future for the US and China completely to separate. 
the economies are too intertwined at this point in many, many different dimensions. So assuming that that's not possible, one of the major challenges is to figure out how best the economic as well as political, social, cultural, and psychological dimensions can be managed effectively so that opportunities, good opportunities are there can be identified and taken advantage in the right way by the people on both sides and the other stuff basically not supported in any way because we certainly do not want to contribute to the support of uh, a regime that is uh, basically not not uh, uh, democratic and that has imposed some of the national security constraints that um, Beijing has and the mainland and to a certain extent in Hong Kong. But I would submit that Hong Kong, and this is not to be taken lightly or facilely, but that Hong Kong remains a separate, by and large, economic and social and cultural powerhouse within Asia, and that provides an opportunity, but one that has got to be looked at very, very carefully, but it's still there and it still may provide linkages between Hawaii and Hong Kong. And if the future ever becomes much more benign and much more advantageous to the US and to China, then Hong Kong, my guess is, will continue to play a very, very major role in that region. So it's a long answer, Jay, but it's a tough question you ask, and it's a very, very profound and fundamental question. Yeah, I appreciate, appreciate your thoughts about that. And I, I, I join with you in hoping that things will improve in the future. Um, I don't see that as coming anytime soon, um, but we can, we can hope. Let me, but let me ask you to flesh out one thing more before you take off, and, and that is this. Um, I don't think these opportunities are what they might have been the last time we discussed Hong Kong, you know, vis-a-vis -vis Hawaii, uh, you know, in the last um, this conference you put on. Um, the question is, what are those opportunities now? Uh, they've changed. What are they? If I'm coming to the, you know, the, the, the conference, if I'm ready to make some sort of investment, time, energy, risk, whatnot, what are the possibilities for me? You know, to be quite honest, at this point, maybe Barina, Barina can be a lot more specific on those items. I cannot because I've not looked at uh, particular trade and, and service investment opportunities in Hong Kong for a while, uh, quite frankly. But what is interesting is that even with the uh, State Department and Department of Commerce looking at Hong Kong, they still look upon Hong Kong as a a relatively productive place where you can sell product, you can export from uh, Hong Kong uh, and other things of that sort, shy perhaps of doing uh, foreign direct investment in you know businesses and operations in Hong Kong at this time. So there are opportunities primarily in the service sector, I am told, that are there that for places like Hawaii, which, and of course we have smaller business enterprises, may be more appropriate and may be effective uh, as opposed to, you know, larger companies from the mainland. And Jay, with regrets to you and Marina, I am going to have to leave. So I appreciate the chance to, to speak with you. Sorry I took so long in some of my answers, but as always, your questions are very trenchant and uh, uh, not susceptible to short yes or no answers. So thanks again, Jay. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Thank you, Jerry. See you soon. Aloha. So, Brina, he, he left the ball with you. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm glad, you know, I was able to ask that question, and I'm glad he was able to answer it in his way. Um, but, but query, you know, who are you trying to attract to this conference? Because, the, oh. you know, the group of people, the community of people, that you did attract, and they were really national, if not international, the last time. Uh, how are they different? Who are they, and why would they come? Okay, uh, I'm glad you asked. Yeah, I. Our goal is to attract Hawaii uh, businesses, um, and maybe government sector. So um, 
we have 1.4 million live in Hawaii. So I only need 200. <laughs> so <laughs> a very small portion, although it's kind of hard to reach out that specific 200, right? <laughs> um, yeah. So I did have uh, quite a bit of um, uh, support, like uh, uh, Hawaii um, DBAC, they are supporting us to send out uh, email to their their target uh, connections, and also um, Hawaii Convention Center also because of the Maui fire. So we basically uh, the last four weeks was very very quiet. You know we understand it's a morning period, right? So now uh, we come down to seven days. So that's why we have to push a. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, and for the United States, United States, um, other area, we also this time we also have a couple of the uh, delegation came from uh, mainland U.S. and Canada, and also we have majority of the speaker this time instead of uh, Hong Kong, we have four speakers. Uh, come from Hong Kong and uh, U.S. Uh, we have more than four, yeah, maybe ten. I'm I'm sorry, maybe uh, seven. Uh, so we have quite a bit. Uh, even uh, you you talk about that the China government, uh, like Los Angeles consulate, they also send um, two person a uh, council to come down here just to say hello. Uh, I understand this is a very uh, uh, sensitive time for a lot of uh, people in the U.S. But I will say, if you look back, 1970, when Nixon um, go to went to uh, China for visit, at that time, uh, the mainland China never changed. They are the same uh, to today, right? So they are the same policy. Uh, nothing is has been changed, but U.S. give them gave them a, a a pass at that time. Try to work with them. So now they do have a conflict. Uh, you know, as everybody can see. But I think those conflict come with time. We can solve it. But this is not for me to say it. We are only a business organization, so we wanted to pass it to the policymaker. So we cannot change that part. We can only do our part to promote Hong Kong and Greater Bay Area, which, which is the southern city, 11th city of China, combined 86 million uh, that, uh, population. So they are very, very strong in economic. So this is the only uh, thing that we try to promote. Of course, uh, the whole forum is a full day, not only just promoting the other side, we like to be the bridge. So we're also promoting Hawaii tourism and real estate. So you can tell uh, in the afternoon session, we have the tourism board, uh, the Hawaii legislature uh, in tourism chair uh, also come down to speak. And also uh, my boss, Steve Zambaro, <laughs> gonna speak to the audience uh, how he do the foreign direct investment. Uh, but of course, uh, his investment uh, is from majority is from Japan. Uh, just recently a deal that he made the three, 330 million deal in uh, Maui for a hotel deal. Actually, the seller is from Hong Kong, is uh, Mr. Shaw uh, company. I mean, uh, People know Mr. Shaw in Hong Kong. So run, run. we do have a big tie with Hong Kong. Is that Run Run? Huh? What's uh, Mr. Shaw's first name? Uh, run Run Shaw. Mm, I thought so. Run Run Shaw, yeah. Oh, so, okay, I think it's interesting that, um, you know, that the people in Hong Kong would want to invest in Hawaii, and it's compelling to invest in Maui right now. And, and good for him and good for us for getting that big investment. And good for Steve Sombrero. <laughs> um, but, and you, yes. but, but, the, you know, the, really the question is whether anybody from Hawaii would invest in, you know, in Hong Kong right now. I mean, I, there are certain risks, for example, um, if you open your mouth too much, 
you'll you'll wind up getting retrained somewhere in Western China, um, and that's not a good idea. So you know the 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 openness that that existed you know twenty years ago uh, in China before Xi um, was really was really enjoyable. I mean, everybody thought that we could do the kind of business you're talking about, and we could establish sort of a a business diplomacy with China, where win, 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 win. Um, but I, you know, it's not the same anymore. And if you go there under the, the national security law, um, and you say something, um, you're going to be in trouble. Um, I mean, even Hong Kong residents who are elsewhere, outside of Hong Kong, if they say something, hmm, they're going to be in trouble. Uh, and of course, as I mentioned, you know, have this espionage thing going on. It's not not healthy, not good. And and finally, you know, you have the whole thing with Ukraine, where China is uh, undermining our policy in Ukraine. So, bottom line is, um, you know, the, what are the risks? I mean, in reality, if you were to advise uh, an American, a Hawaiian investor, business person. Uh, about doing business with Hong Kong in Hong Kong, which is essentially in China now, uh, what what would you tell them to be careful about? Um, I think common sense. You <clears throat> don't go on the street and against the government, right? So you don't do that. So uh, I guess is uh, we are Hawaii is a small and medium size of company and a lot of professional, and we have a lot that we can co uh, co operate coordinate together. For example, uh, not only the business owner itself, for professional, they can go to Hong Kong to become part of, you know, they can open a, a, a office. Uh, a small office is called, you know, so the, it's very good incentive right now for a small business owner or a, even though a professional. And, and, and Hong Kong, all the time is an uh, international city. Uh, right now, it's still international city. As long as I, I, my own personal belief, as long as you don't touch of the political politics side, you don't, you know, take take sides. You, you just do your do your work, do your business. I don't see any problem at all. Uh, I, I guess is we are trying to this form. We are trying to solve people problem on the perception. So I think a lot of people have the perception thinking that uh, Hong Kong right now, 180% change. Yeah, they, they add a security law, but other than that, the, the rest of the thing is the same. So um, unless you're doing security business, like the the IT, the sensitive one, you know, that, that I, I will say that maybe now is not the time to do this type of business there. But otherwise, and uh, for example, tourism, we can cooperate with tourism with Hong Kong. We can cooperate uh, with other cities, uh, southern city as well. And also, uh, retail wholesale. I, I I don't see why not. I mean, I I really don't. And professionals, especially, um, uh, a lot of professional like um, lawyer, architect, uh, accountant, those. It will, can can be uh, work in Hong Kong. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things going on, actually. Yeah. You know, I mentioned, um, you know, when I formed my question to uh, Jerry, that, um, and I've seen this before, is that Hong Kong, the government of Hong Kong, um, has dedicated a lot of money, Hong Kong dollars, 100 million Hong Kong dollars, to uh, dining vouchers for the quote night economy end quote because uh, they want to bring it back. What that what that tells you though is that uh, they're worried about that that you know, people tourists are not going there. I'm not sure if tourists are coming here. Certainly, uh, the Hawaii Tourism Authority would like to see them come here. There was a time we had you know before COVID we had expectations and aspirations to have a veritable flood of Chinese tourists, but. Lots of things have intervened, mostly mostly the the you know the brutality of the government. But uh, lot, lots of things have intervened, and and they I don't think they've come here so much. So it would be a good idea to you know incentivize them coming here, and obviously they're trying to incentivize us to go there. 
Uh, and remember, you know, they had a bad time with COVID. Their economy is a little rocky right now, maybe very rocky right now. And they're trying to recover from that. So they have every reason in the world to encourage, you know, trade uh, between Hawaii and other places uh, to come to Hong Kong. But query, um, you're getting help from HTA, you're getting help from Hong Kong as well. Are they are they uh, encouraging you, incentivizing you? Right. Uh, so uh, fortunate this time we have Hong Kong Tourism Board uh, sponsor as as uh, pa, uh, for this forum. So you will say, oh, they might must be in trouble. Everybody in trouble. Be honest, uh, Jay. Yeah. So not only this Hong Kong. So because of the COVID. Uh, so I think this is their strategy. They wanted to tell the world Hong Kong is still open. It's still open for business too. So that's why you see my screen, the screen, the duck, the duck in a Victoria <laughs> Harbor. That yeah. is kind of cute. And and it also is, yeah. we present Hong Kong. That's why I wanted to have it. <laughs> um, also, also our forum, uh, we will hang hang out a little duck to our <laughs> participant. <laughs> so <laughs> lastly, I wanted to say, uh, from the beginning, I wanted to invite the Hong Kong Tourism Board to come down to Hawaii for this forum. So, but because of they have their, in, uh, you know, the reason, internal reason, so they cannot come. Uh, they can, you know, everybody just started a, uh, back to uh, normal business. So sometimes it is the labor, uh, manpower may, may not be there. So anyway, uh, but they, they sponsor us. They really wanted to engage with the Hawaii audience and and I would say we are just a connector. We are bridging the gap. So hopefully next time that we can invite them to really talk to Hawaii, uh, other other uh, tourism, Hawaii tourism board and other legislature. So, but I will say I am optimistic. Yeah, everyone. Okay, well, I really like the different. idea. You and Steve Sombrero in that uh, hotel, whatnot. But it just strikes me that, you know, in hard times, in hard, what do you want to call it? Mm, governmental times uh, in China, um, Chinese from all parts of China want to want to move their money out of China. Uh, they want to invest elsewhere. I mean, a good example would be Vancouver, where there are an enormous number of, of Chinese investors who have, you know, contributed to the development of that city over some years. So yes. here we are, here we are with stress and strain of the economic problems, Political problems, uh, the the possibility of contention with the United States, and and of course with Taiwan that never that never goes away. I think. Um, so when you see these guys who come here from Hong Kong um, to talk to you about improving trade and investment between Hong Kong and Hawaii, um, you ought to really mention that that whole affair with the hotel in Maui, because, um, you know, uh, we are thinking, we should all be thinking about what we could do to rebuild Maui. And if Chinese money uh, that would like to, you know, leave China and come invest in the United States is available, um, that would be a real blessing for Maui, don't you think? Yes, I was think so. I, I, I guess it's everything possible. So if you only focus on the negative you got is a negative result. If you think, uh, focus on the positive, end up you will get the positive result. That's my th philosophy. <laughs> so I hope that everyone will come to the forum just to uh, be open-minded, to listen to those uh, from Hong Kong or those from the US mainland uh, to talk about what is the um, complexity and the opportunities. This is our theme. Okay, let me ask you one last question. Okay. You know, I, I'm pretty candid in my expression, my views on, on how Xi Jinping is doing. And uh, I wonder if I could go or whether I should be <clears throat> afraid. You're talking about go to Hong Kong? Yes. No, you shouldn't be afraid. <laughs> unless you're in the unless you're in the in the blacklist in uh, from Hong Kong government, I doubt it. <laughs> no, 
<laughs> you shouldn't be afraid. Just be a normal person. Uh, you know, be common sense. Uh, you know, we, so you don't you don't go on the public um, to protest, right? So when you visit Hong Kong, you won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So what message you want to leave to people about I the want... changing world? the changes in China and Hong Kong, the changes in Hawaii, and how that can all come together. We we are just wanted to provide um, the information, the correct information, not the fake information to the people of Hawaii or to the audience, our audience. So hope to put it there, hopefully they will uh, digest it to make the decision themselves. Okay, Marina, have a great conference. I wish you well on that. Thank Come. you very much for trying to connect <laughs> us all. Make one world for us, will you? Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Just get Marina, our Paul. website. You wanted to to have, yeah. uh, you don't mind that I talk to our website? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, our website is hkbah.us. Okay, uh, we'll put that on the screen. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Barina. Barina Poon of the Hong Kong Business Association of Hawaii, uh, known to his friends as HICPA. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you.